I blue day. Say extreme day. I blue day. Say we're living. We're living, we're living, we're living in extreme day. <laughs> Okay, welcome back. Here's the gear from the backpack. Um, shy of the weapons over here, there's that big old pile of pre-stuff. My weapons there, my AR-15 with the Surefire 60 round mags. Okay, so we already talked about that, but everything else is in the pack. So I'm just going to walk you through it real quickly and then I'm going to break it down. Those of you that, that want to see each each bag, I think, I think it'd be worth some time. But I'll just kind of go through it more specifically here. But if you just want the overview, this here is a bartering bag. This here is my electronics. Of course, paper towel, aluminum foil, toilet paper. A couple different ways of, of, of cooking. One's a stove and one's an actual grill. Okay, some of these tools I already talked about, um, but I'll get back into that. Uh, one of the things I didn't talk about was was right here in the middle, this beige little round thing. That's a, that's a gun cleaning kit. Uh, the tools that I carry, and I'll break those down. Those are some important tools there. Um, Here's uh, fire sources and some little bit of hygiene. I do carry some camo. I have a field trauma kit and a very, very, very high-end and very well-stocked um, uh, um, um, first aid kit. Trekking poles that I talked about, some cooking gear, get into my weaponry. That's a SIG B220 there with all my extra mags. And that little pouch right there is invaluable, and I'll explain that. I have two, I have, I have two 511 tactical pouches right here. Um, the, one of them has clothes and one of them has food. I keep those kind of in their own bout, pouches because I have to change those seasonally. Um, over here, this is obviously my two liters of water, but uh, here is my, uh, uh, this is my food gathering. If, if I'm not coming home, I do carry 150 feet of a really high-end mountaineering 8 millimeter cord or rope. Uh, here's the backpack unloaded um, up over here. Gonna have miscellaneous things for, for, for hygiene, for cooking, some vitamins, all my manuals, my books, my Bible, everything that I've got that I need to protect. Um, true survival stuff like mirrors and and um, and, and 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 various uh, you know classical survival stuff there. In this one, I've got my sleeping bag and a couple of things I'll go over. I've got to always carry a good pair of leather gloves more than my tactical gloves uh, because if I'm doing any kind of rappelling or or moving with my rope, you've got to have your hands protected. Period. Got a gear protection here, and then I've got some signaling um, devices here, and uh, we'll go through this. But I just wanted to kind of give you a quick overview. Those of you that are already bored after uh, however many minutes it is, if you don't want to see me break this gear down, then uh, it was, it was, I'm glad you've been along this this far. Um, those of you that are going to hang on, I, I do think there are some things here that, that you'll find uh, interesting, and I um, encourage you to put into your bug out. So I will be back. And what I'm going to do, with the next picture is I'm going to be kind of hands-on. I might even put might even put the gear up here on the piano bench so you guys can really get a look at what I've got going on here. We're living, we're living, we're living an extreme day. All right, so I'm back. I realized that that um, red piano bench cover was hideous, so uh, so I went ahead and got a green one so I can lay out the stuff and hopefully you guys can see it. I might have to throw it up here, but uh, let me go through a couple things here. I don't want to make this super, super long. Again, I've already kind of gone over uh, this Gerber, uh, super nice tomahawk. Um, it's called Downwind, uh, or Downwind. <laughs> uh, it's called a uh, Downrange uh, tomahawk. You might want to check into that. Uh, it's expensive, but uh, it's not super super heavy. But again, as a breaching tool, as an axe, as a hammer, um, as, a, as a weapon, last resort. Uh, I think that's invaluable. So um, I'm really actually thankful to have that in my in my bug out bag. Um, went over my couple other things. My binocular. Let me just. Uh, let me just throw all these up here, and uh, we'll just talk about it real quickly. Uh, again, if you want just a little bit more, more in depth. So, uh, a couple things here. Uh, GPS, uh, definitely, um, definitely would like a GPS. Again, AA batteries, so keeping your batteries to a, a minimum of size. Um, uh, nice pair of really light uh, binoculars. You know, some people carry a monocular, but that's fine. Um, these are, I think, a 10 power, but uh, Steiner is a, is, a, is a fairly good brand. 
uh, you know, get bang for the buck. Again, this I don't get a lot of use, so I'm not going to spend a ton of money on this this stuff out here. A couple things I just want to mention. I'm not going to go into have lots of toilet paper. I, I, I actually like paper. I actually like paper towels and aluminum foil. I think they're really really invaluable for a lot of different things. So I'm just going to throw those in there. I'm not going to really mention those again. Um, I already mentioned the Gerber knife sharpener, again, the downrange knife sharpener. Uh, highly recommend if you're not familiar with it. Do a little research on it. It's an uh, incredibly light and very powerful tool to, 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 to have in your pack. Uh, a couple of different flashlights I actually have. Um, where's my other one? And I have a, actually have a, a, a mag light. Um, again, LED, uh, double, double A's. I think there's a couple things that I almost want lots of redundancy. Light's one of them. You've got to see, I've actually got two different headlamps as well. I've um, got a little tiny one and I've got a pretty good substantial one. And I guess I do have one on my helmet. So I guess I have six redundancies with, with light. Um, I'm okay with that. Uh, a little bit of weight, but I want to be able to see at night or see what's going on. The other place of redundancy that I'm working on, um, right now I only have two knives. I would like a really good, I've uh, been looking at a Spyderco, um, foldable, collapsible knife. Uh, I've got a couple other decent ones. You know, I've got some Sogs and some Gerbers around, but I'd like to get a really high-end foldable knife. It's one thing I don't have in my pack right now. I do have a really nice, I love this Gerber for the bang for the buck. Again, this is a, this is a workhorse. Uh, fixed blade, I can pound. I've got the serrations on there. So, so again, I've already mentioned that. These two in concert, and with, with these tools, I don't know if you can, if you can see, you should be able to see that. I hope you can see that. Um, this is a military spec. I don't keep it in the molly. I don't keep it on the outside. I keep it on the inside. But uh, these are getting harder to find. It took me a while to find this. But, but what this is, this is a, a gun cleaning kit. And it is the most compact, complete gun cleaning kit I've ever seen in my life. Good quality equipment with your wire brushes, your, your, uh, your lubricants, all the tools you would need to break down an AR-15, 45 ACP, 12 gauge shotgun and the 308, the seven, the, what is that, the um, seven, what is that, whatever that is, seven, seven, five, six, um, which I also have, but again, I typically use the five, five, six or the, or the 223, but it has all three of those. And I actually think it also does a 40 caliber. I don't, I don't even own a 40 caliber, but yeah, so it does, it does the five, five, six, the seven, six, two, the nine millimeter, the 40 caliber, the 45 and the 12 gauge, all in this compact. Um, when I, when I tried to find this, I, I actually found it online and they were completely sold out. And, but, I'll, but I'll tell you, um, this, 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 um, this kit, is, uh, it's got some gear in it that when I broke it down and it went out in the garage and tried to clean one of my guns, I was super impressed with its size and, and what it really had in it. So between, between this cleaning kit and again, the Leatherman Mutt and some of the accessories, I feel really good about being able to you know, keep my, my equipment functioning and um, and 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 and, and uh, very um, you know deadly in in the in the field. Okay, so that then comes down to my electronics. Like I told you, I have a high end electronic bag. This one I spend I spend a little bit more money on trying to protect my electronics. Um, so let me break these things down. One of the things I really think is important is is having uh, two way communication. This is a Baofeng, it's a Chinese radio, it's only like 40 bucks. But this radio is a ham sender. And I've, I've done, I, I can, I can, the guy, I, don't, I don't have a ham license, but every once in a while I'll just, you know, do a radio check and the guys are gracious enough to say, yep, getting you. So I send this up to the repeaters up, 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 up on a couple of our different mountains. And again, I know those repeaters are all dialed into this. Now one of the things back over here, I've got my brochures and I've got on a waterproof paper, I've got my frequencies of my repeaters in the area. Really important, so I can dial those in. I can just listen, or if I have to say, hey guys, okay, the, you know, we're martial law, it's hit the fan, help me out, what are you guys seeing, what's going on? But this will hit, pick, my, pick up my receivers, or my repeaters. So between this and the unit in, that's just a scanner. This is only a one way, this is a two way. I can actually talk from this and hear myself on the, the ham frequencies of, of my scanner. So I carry these two. This this is takes double A's, okay? I like that. This the only thing I don't like about the Baofeng is it takes a proprietary battery. I'll just say that right up front. This might make it a little bit longer. I don't like having batteries that are specialized. I keep these charged, I keep these fresh when I go to my work. I have two different things I plug these into so they stay fresh daily. I put them back in my bug up bag. And um, but but one thing I'm trying to figure out is how I can keep this charged in the field. Right now I haven't come up with that. So it's one of my it's on my it's on my immediate you know, f you know 
know, how to how to come up with that. Um, I don't have any batteries in this, but this is a high-end um, um, headlamp. I've used this actually on a couple of mountaineering trips. It's fantastic. It's got the SOS built in. It's got red. It's got blue. It's got um, a super bright LED. And it's got battery-saving LED. This is really nice. If I'm moving out in, in the brush, whatever I need to do, uh, really nice uh, head headlamp there. I've also got a second headlamp, and I, I've double bagged this. So hang on, hang on a sec. Um, but I've also got this little tiny, a uh, little tiny headlamp. Okay, uh, I, uh, this is the only battery. This one's gone. I toss it because I'm not going to carry an extra battery on this, even though it wouldn't be a lot of weight. But this is super night at night. I've used this. I use this mountaineering in the, in the tent when guys are asleep, and I'm just trying to read a brochure. I'm trying to read the route. I'm trying to you know read something. Um, super light, super small, uh, nice little evening little reader. Uh, I really like this. Uh, I guess I have seven then. I guess I have quite a few flashlights. And you guys might be thinking that's ridiculous, but man. Uh, I like light. I guess I like light. That's why I like Jesus, because he is the light and the way, the truth, and the life. He's also the light of the world. Um, but this is a little flashlight. But what I like about this one is I'll just pull this, okay? It becomes a little lantern. And I'll explain to you how I, how I would make a, you know, a, a very quick um, shelter in the evening. But uh, this might be something nice to hang down from the, my shelter and have a little light as I'm, as I'm bedding down or, or whatever I'm doing in the evening. Not that I'm doing a lot of sleeping, but... Um, but uh, uh, nonetheless, I, I will be doing some sleeping. Um, this is a, a goal zero. This is, again, I think you can see that. Uh, this is a, a really nice um, um, uh, uh, kit that, all super compact actually. And I've got a couple different cords in here. Um, but this is a, a, a solar battery charger. And um, if I could actually figure out how to open it. Um, this, it's, Pretty robust. I've, I've strapped this on a few backpacks on some longer, not mountaineering, but on longer backpacking trips. And this, with with this right here on the carabiner, and it sits out on your pack. This will charge up some double A's nicely throughout the day. Okay, so um, really nice. This goal zero done a nice job. In, in the inside of this, that they've got a, you know a backpack or a backup solar. So this is a, a backup. I've got some cables that for various electronics that I might need to charge in here, um, but also you can put right in there, you know, four double A's, and it'll charge, and it keeps it nice and charged. And um, especially again, if it hits the fan, um, you might want to be able to charge this. Do I need this just to get home? No, I live, you know, I work 15 miles from home. I'm not going to need a lot of this gear to get home. That's what I'm talking about. This extra 20, 25 pounds of what if gear, it's going with me, especially right now. This is why it's called my 72 hour pack. My 24, 24 doesn't have this in it. My 24 doesn't have this in it. My 24 has this in it. My 24 doesn't have this in it. So, so again, I have different levels of, of the way I, I prepare. Right now, I'm at 72 because I, I, I think we're on a heightened with the with this this everything that's going on in in, in, in DC. Um, again, I have various different cables in here that I might need. Um, I do have a pair of you know four. Um, lithiums that um, if I don't have time to charge or if I just want to get a quick battery in um, I have two uh, four packs a little bit heavy but it's worth it because these will recharge in my solar these are charged up right now I keep these charged fresh I actually replace these every week got a charger in the closet and I just I just rotate these out these are fresh these are ready to go but these will also recharge in my little solar my little solar charger though um, one of the things on the bow fang that I have in here, uh, actually a couple things are things on the bow fang. One is, is an actual ear piece. So I can have this two-way radio and I can be talking quietly and I can be listening quietly if I don't want a bunch of chatter. If I'm trying, if I'm trying to hide and I want to hear what's going on, I want to communicate. It's a nice little ear piece came with it that um, I, I do keep on, on, on my, on, on, in my pack. Um, this one here, is an actual about 30 foot um, uh, made by uh, Sen Jian. It's a 30 foot antenna. This will just go for 30 feet. You hang this up on a tree or a fence post against black, inc inconspicuous. This has an incredible, <coughs> excuse me, amount of reception to to either this radio, well not this radio. This radio I actually have a different. I have a different uh, uh, antenna on, on order, uh, a little bit more, so I can actually here uh, a little bit further out on my local frequencies. This one does pretty well. Again, it has CB also is another frequency. It has marine also. I think I might have mentioned that. Um, but I have another I have another antenna on order that's a little taller. Um, again, it, it'll pick up uh, several more miles than this one. 
and it's also compatible with the valve fang, so I can, re I can move those antennas back and forth, but it's worth the, the investment. Um, that said, this 30-foot antenna that, that, that I can reel out is for this radio. This is a different radio, different than these two, so I guess I have three radios on, on, on my pack. This is a really nice, um, really nice compact AM FM short wave radio. And I've picked up, literally I've picked up frequencies I can't even believe on this, um, coming off, you know, bouncing off the ionosphere. Um, so when I couple it with this 30 foot, hang it to a tree, and I, I practice with this, you know, it's crazy, my wife thinks, what are you doing? I'm out in the backyard and I've got my, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working with it, trying to figure out, okay, well, in, in the trench, you know, what can I hear? What can I just detect? What frequencies can I pick up? So I was sitting there listening to the police or the fire on this, and I'm setting up a little stove and, and having dinner. Um, but, but this is a really nice compact, again, I'm not worried about an EMP, I think this is coming with me. Um, but uh, it's in my 72, it's a little, you know, again, all this stuff is a little bulky, but um, I'm okay with bulk if, if, if we're in a heightened state of what I believe we are right now. So a nice shortwave uh, AM FM radio and uh, pretty compact. Again, it runs with double A's so I can charge it with my charger. And, and I think that's invaluable to be able to hear what's going on. It's nice picking up shortwave. One other thing I won't mention later, so I'll mention it now, is over in this bag right here. Okay, these are all my, this is all my, books, brochures, and any kind of thing that I might need a reference, but this is my reference. Um, I've got all the frequencies of shortwave I've got when they broadcast. And it's two pages of, again, waterproof paper, all printed off. And I know when I can pick up Canada stations, uh, uh, the BBC, I can pick up German stations, I can pick up Japanese radio, I can pick up Korean, Chinese, Russian. I, I, they're all, I know the frequencies and I know when they broadcast. You know, you need to know that because some of them broadcast, you know, at 2 a.m. Uh, you need to know that. You need to know what frequency and what time. And again, I have all those printed off. They're in that pack. So if I'm sitting there kind of in the trench trying to figure out what's going on out there in the real world, I don't want to just get, you know, the infotainment that comes out of out of America, it's nice to know that, that the frequencies and the time that those other that those other uh, countries broadcast on to try to pick up what's going on because they're going to be they're going to be talking to their people. So I want to be able to pick that up if possible. The last thing in my electronics is a military grade. Um, it's called by AC, ACR Electronics. This is a signaling device. Now, one of the things I'll just mention here. I know, I know it's going to be about an hour long by the time we're all done. But if you're with me this long, you're interested in this gear and. and as was I for a lot of you out there that were putting years together. There's two different, two different um, uh, perspectives depending on, on, on what's going on. Do I want to be found or do I want to hide? Uh, this is definitely a be found device. A uh, pretty amazing device actually. This is a signaling device and it signals in a couple different ways. Um, when you turn it on, you can, you can actually, it's actually a strobe. Okay, and it's bright, and when I go in the backyard, it just lights up the neighborhood, all right? I can hide that, all right? So I can hide that, and now you can't see it this way, theoretically, right? But you can see it, and it's blue from overhead. So that's, that, that signals planes, helicopters, whatever. Then I can take this cap, put that cap on it, and now it goes, guess what, infrared. So now you can't see it at all, but infrared just lights up like crazy. Again, depending on whether I want to be found or not, great tool, AA batteries, pretty light, military grade, phenomenal piece of, of, of equipment to have if you want to be found or if you, if you want help. Um, and you believe that people out there trying to help are really trying to help. So I'll just say that and I'll move all my electronics off and move off, off onto the next, next couple of items. Uh, next couple of items, I'm going to go ahead and pull up this one and um, uh, this one here. Okay, so in these pouches, this, this happens to be um, exactly what it looks like, a little tiny grill. Uh, I used to use this in the high Sierras. It's aluminum, super light, just weighs a few ounces. But if you make a little fire and you just put that on there, you can throw some fish on there or throw a cat or a rat, whatever you're eating. Um, uh, really nice, it has a nice little sleeve, super light. Uh, but again, if I want to use this with my uh, with my my cooking equipment, I carry a little stainless steel cooking pot, and I can put that on the fire if I want the fire. Uh, again, really super light. Little little. If I want to heat up some water from my water, um, I could just go ahead and put that on there. Uh, I can also use to heat this. 
I can use my ESPIT stove. I've got an ESPIT stove right here. I think an ESPIT stove is, is or however you pronounce it, I call it ESPIT. You guys might, I might be butchering that. But these little um, ESBIT ESPIT, tiny little stove. I think you can see that probably right there. It's got the fuel cells right here. They're incredible. Uh, again, if I don't want smoke coming up and I want to heat some water to rehydrate one of my meals, this ESPIT stove with these fuel cells is invaluable. Um, if, I, if I feel like I'm a little safer and I want to go ahead and start a fire, I've got bomber-proof matches. I've even got a, a, you know, a, a fire starter. I've got um, fire starting uh, uh, tinder in here, a couple different lighters. Uh, this is a little can opener here. But again, this is, this is my fire pack and it, and it goes with, with, with my cooking and, and heating. Okay. Got a little spork. Um, I, I, you know, some people might just drink it or rough it, but yeah, it's nice to have a fork. It, you know, I, honestly, I don't mind roughing it. It's one thing I don't mind, but but it's nice just to have a fork because it doesn't weigh that much. Um, so that being said, um, I'll just go continue on with this. This is a really nice uh, tarp. It's a uh, five. Um, what is it? Five by seven. Five feet by seven feet. This tarp with, and I have a couple uh, tent pegs over here. This tarp with my two trekking poles makes a complete tent. Really nice tent. My length, seven feet long by five feet. That's enough. I'll put some ground cover down, put, get my sleeping bag. This makes a nice tent. I'll probably, with this, once I make this, I'll throw my camouflage netting. This is just a very generic camouflage netting. Again, fairly light, but I'll throw this over the top and I'll be pretty secure. I might do my ESPIT stove, cook a little, and listen to my radios, trying to trying to assess what's going on. Again, this is, this is the, 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 one of the what if, uh, what if factors. Um, also in this, I have a couple different knife sharpeners. I love my, my, my downrange Gerber, but I also have a ceramic. These are super light. Never have a, <laughs> too many knife sharpeners. So I can do a couple strikes on this. This is not quite as good of technology. Um, I, I really like this, the one with the ceramic, but I, I keep these kind of with my cooking. Um, I've got a couple little really quick uh, camp set sheets. Let's say I just, you know, I'm just completely grimy. These are a little self-dissolving, made by Coleman. I uh, take a little bit of water in these, wash your hands, you're good to go. Have, have some dinner with a little bit of, of, of sterile hands. Uh, again, I have a, a camp towel in here and um, I'm good to go. What else do I carry in this, in my evening pack? Uh, kind of my evening in the, in the middle of the night or, you know, when I'm cooking dinner. I do carry a little, uh, I, I carry one of these little, um, micro uh, candles. Okay, these use a little tiny candle. But I'll tell you what, I have been on numerous mountaineering trips where one tiny little candle in a tent or at least something that's holding in the heat adds an incredible amount of warmth and also just ambiance. Man, if it's hit the fan, you have nothing to go back to. There's something about a little tiny flame that, 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 that kind of that talks, you know, talks to your spirit and, and just tells you things that might be okay or, or at least for the night they're okay. Um, so I do carry this little candle. I have a couple backup uh, candles in, in, in that, that pouch over there. Um, but tiny, super light little candle. I keep it in there to keep it protected and, and, and we're good to go. Um, I also keep in this pouch, um, I keep my, this is my coffee filter. One of the things I'm a snob is, is coffee. This not, not, isn't necessarily for coffee, it's also for, for filtering out particulates or dirty water. Um, this doubles as a couple different things. In fact, I don't even have any coffee grinds on, I have instant coffee. So this wouldn't even work for coffee, but it is to help filter out water. Always carry salt, cooking salt. Super, super important to be able to, uh, again, one of those comforts of, of when it's, when it, when, when, if it's hit the fan, uh, salt is, is an invaluable um, commodity um, for comfort. Okay, lastly in this pack is something I want some of you guys, um, I, haven't, I haven't heard on any of the, on the bug out bags, I'm not saying they're not out there, it's just all the research I've done hasn't, hasn't talked about this, and that's a perimeter alarm. Um, I use this particular perimeter alarm. Um, I'm, I'm in the process of, with a couple of different physicists in my, in, in, in my, at my university, of designing a, one a little bit lighter. It's actually pretty heavy. For what it is, it probably weighs about five, six ounces. That's a lot of weight. But what it is, is a perimeter alarm. It takes these little, tw uh, 12 gauge blanks, okay, and it, and it, and it, you put this cotter pin, it's quite, the spring is pretty, pretty hot. Let's see if I can load it up here. But you basically take and you load, I'll just do it like this. You load the cotter pin, spring loaded, okay, you can see that. You put your 12 gauge shell there. This has two quick screws or some zip ties, which is what I would use to put it to a tree or whatever pretty low. Then you put your cotter pin. And for me, the way I thought about this, and I have one extra one, I put a cotter pin this way, 
and I put, or I've got tripwire, put tripwire this way to a tree, put tripwire this way. Hopefully I've got some kind of background here where I'm protected. This is ways out. Someone, some, someone comes along in the middle of the night, pulls it off, 12 gauge round goes off. You're up like that, okay? Trip alarm. And, and again, like I said, I'm in the process of designing something a little bit less than this and a little bit less than this, but right now this is the only one I could find that, that I, I liked and it functioned well uh, in, 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 in the way I want to be woken up. If, if anything happened, but I'm not going to be sleeping super soundly. But nonetheless, um, if I wanted to catch a couple winks and um, and needed a little bit of uh, of, of, of warning uh, that, that something was brewing out there, someone was snooping around, or some big large animal, trip alarm, nice asset. Um, lastly, in this in this in this category, um, I have my, this is a super cool, amazing. Super light. It's made out of titanium. I spent a little bit more money, but basically it, it um, builds into a four-piece uh, pyramid with a bottom, and you feed the wood in here, and, and you set a pot up here, and incredibly, incredibly efficient. Very, very little bit of wood um, heats up a pot and boils water and cooks, and um, super light. Uh, I highly recommend that. Again, I think I mentioned to you it's made by by um, the L Mini. Just Google L Mini if you're interested in that. But again, I keep that on board and uh, super, super, super amazing little, little, little cooking. Uh, again, again, this isn't a just get home. This is the what if. So that goes in the what if category. All right. So that said, uh, I'm going to move into kind of my again my my uh, 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 signaling and 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 just kind of general gear here. Uh, one of the things I'd encourage you to do down here. I, I've got a couple different paracords. Uh, get the, Get the true paracord. Okay, this is true paracord. This is the real deal. This is a knockoff paracord. It's good. This um, uh, what is this? Rothko. Um, I found this to be pretty decent, but man, this is the true paracord. It's worth the extra couple bucks. Uh, the quality difference between these two is is actually um, it, it's it's obvious. Uh, I carry both. I, I like the black, but also you know I've got a lot of camouflage, so I I don't mind the, the camel version. I, I know paracord carries the camel version, but but. Um, um, uh, paracord, you can never have too much of it. That stuff, that stuff comes is is, is invaluable when, when you're trying to when trying to secure something. Um, so signaling, I do carry a couple uh, extra candles for my for my little lantern I showed you. Uh, these little tea lights, super light, a lot of energy in, in, in wax, and um, I, I do keep those. Um, I have a couple different ways to purify water. Uh, one of these is is called a life straw. Um, so I'm going to use that coffee filter I showed you to filter out the big particulates. I'm going to use the life straw. If I if I run out of my, I'll go through that two liters pretty quickly. Um, but uh, this life straw will, will definitely uh, strain out anything. It's super light, super light. Hull, hardly any weight there. Um, uh, uh, for water purifying as well, I do carry a scary pin traveler. Um, again, this is a battery. I, don't, I can't recharge. So when this is gone, I chuck it. Um, I, I think there is a version that I can, or the, whatever those, the CR or whatever they are, batteries that I can, I can use my recharge to recharge them. But I don't have those right now. Um, but this takes those those batteries. But uh, really light, uh, a really nice UV source that you fill it up with water, run it through your coffee filter, put that in there, run this in there for I think it's two minutes or a minute and a half, um, and it, it completely sterilizes using um, 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 high energy uh, photons, and, and it kills everything. Couple glow sticks. Glow sticks are nice to be able to to um, um, keep your gear keep your gear organized or uh, identified or, or yourself or whatever. I, I think it's always good to have glow sticks. Uh, one thing I do carry is a, is this is out of my out of out of my fishing boat. Um, it's just really light 20 gauge um, flare gun, and um, you put these 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 flares in it. And these things these things I don't know if you ever shot these. These uh, these flares, but they are incredibly bright. And again, if you're trying to signal, if you're trying to get help, this is invaluable. I carry three hand flares. Again, I, a higher hand. Uh, this isn't just a Ziploc bag. This is this is a super tough, uh, really good water resistant. Because again, these are super sensitive to water. But I carry three hand flares if I needed to signal or, or, or signal someone. Um, again, uh, really nice signaling. If I'm trying to catch attention, if not. You know, I've got other things, so depending on what I need to do, if I need to get attention or not attention, this is a great attention device. One of the things I'm in the process of trying to come up with, and they're out there, I just haven't been able to acquire them, is I can replace all of this weight with, with my, 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 my SIG. They carry 45 ACP flares that I can shoot out of my, out of my 45. 
that would replace all of this. So um, everyone is sold out of them right now. So uh, just know that you know I, I eventually I plan on getting rid of this whole stack. Maybe keep a couple of hand flares, but the gun in these 20 gauge will go by the way if I can find the 45 ACP flares, which the reviews there are actually pretty 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 straightforward or pretty good. Uh, I carry a rain poncho, okay, nice rain poncho to drape over me, and, and then I have some really cheap paracord. But again, all of these all of these go. And, and this is kind of my, you know, my, my gear for, for signaling, for water purification. Um, this is a really nice uh, Explore pack. It's, it's, it's called a Gear Aid. This repairs Gore-Tex, it repairs nylon. Um, they did a really good job with this. They've got some really nice uh, you know, uh, uh, buckles and, and clips, and they've got a little bit of, of, of nylon cord in there. They've got some you know, safety pins and, and glues and, and needles. And this, I actually was impressed with this. And the only reason why I spent the money and, and bought it, because I have a lot of this stuff already in some other bags, but really nice size. And just, I think this is one of the few um, 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 gear aid uh, kind of packs that I, that I purchased. So my manuals, um, I'm not going to go through all my manuals, I'll just mention a couple of them. Um, one, of the, uh, I, I, one of the things that I would encourage you to, to, to invest in, um, of all the survival books, this one is super, super tiny, um, but this SAS Survival Guide, can you see that? Uh, this thing, honestly, this thing has some stuff in it that I'm like, really? That's cool. That is important. And, and again, if it, if it hits the fan and we're going into zombie mode or we're doing the Book of Eli type of scenario, I'm going to have a lot of time to read, right? Um, some of the stuff I would like to regurgitate before it hits the fan, but how to splint and, you know, the, the, it, this has what animals are poisonous, toxic, what plants, what plants are somewhat edible. Um, that being said, I do carry, this is a little bit heavy. But this is a, and I, and I toy with, with taking this out of my pack because this, this is probably weighs about 10 ounces. But this is the edible uh, wild uh, plants of North America. Helps me you know, forage and, 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 and realize what, what can I eat um, when, when you know, my food source is gone. Um, I will say that coupled with this back in this area on my, on my food gathering, uh, plant and my food uh, capability or you know, gathering capability it sits back there. I'll, I'll explain that here in a few minutes. Um, I'm going to explain this here just real briefly. But again, I carry I carry all my you know brochures. Uh, these are just water. You know, they're not water resistant. But these are my you know my radios that I, I showed you earlier. Just keep the manuals, and I keep them in a pretty pretty stout waterproof bag here. I have a, many different types of bags: big bags, little bags, you know, Ziploc bags. Uh, I just think that if you're trying to keep the water out or snow out, for my case, um, you can never have too many bags. I do keep my pocket New Testament. This is actually the, the Bible my dad had in Vietnam and a uh, little New Testament. Um, what I would like, uh, I'm in the process of finding a small full, test, a full Old Testament and New Testament uh, pocket. I'd like, you know, I won't be able to find one this small. But, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of prophecy that, that is in Isaiah and Ezekiel. Be nice to maybe review um, more than just Revelation and, and, and Second Thessalonians there, um, and so I also carry this 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 uh, this journal. If I need to write something down, that that uh, you know in a water environment, um, back over here I also have one of these higher end write anywhere pens. Uh, this pen will write anywhere. Writes in this little journal uh, very very nicely. Um, in here I have my my directions for my mutt. This is basically how to break down an AR-15, just if I have a, like a memory lapse and I can't break my AR-15 down, I just need a quick reference that's in there. Um, and also, as a mountaineer, uh, knots are invaluable. I know about 12 knots that I use on a regular basis um, up, up mountaineering, you know, figure eight on a, on a, on a bite, and figure eight with a, with a fisherman backup. Um, but I, in case I need a quick reference, just like, yeah, what, what, what's the difference clove hitch and one of these other hitches? Um, Right here, real quick access, but I keep that I keep that in my in my in my manuals um, area. But I'll go ahead and put my pen back in that one. I had it over in some other area of my pack. So one of the things I wanted to mention that um, I don't see a lot of guys have in their bug out bags. And again, uh, this is one of those things that that if it really does come down to life and death, one thing I carry, or or not coming home. One of the things I carry is this this mini. Um, it's made by. Um, 
Southern, S-O-U-T-H-O-R-D. I'll have this stuff if you want. If you're interested in it, just, just send me an email, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll drop my email down there. But this little thing here is a little keychain size, but I want to show you something. If, if you're not into, if, if you haven't studied or, or not, don't know the basics of lock picking, um, I think I think in a real world bug out scenario, um, to, to have the basics of a lock picking, uh, how, how locks, how the pins on locks work, uh, honestly, I think that's just invaluable. Uh, I'm just going to show you real quickly. This is just a little little kit. I have a couple different versions of this in my home, you know, at home, and just I, I practice. But um, this little kit here, I'm just going to use one one quick pin. This is the key. I have a I have a very standard master lock down here. I just took this actually took this off my fence outside just before I filmed this. But very standard. This is probably 80% of people have this lock on something they're protecting. If someone wants to really protect something, they're going to invest a little bit more. But I'll just show you. Uh, you know, it might take me here a little minute because I'm on film, and it's always harder when you're on film. But um, I would encourage you to spend some time and go through, uh, just go through the basics of, of lock picking. It, it's not, it's, it, it actually isn't super complicated. Uh, it takes just, you know, it, it takes, you, there are some, there are some tricks and as I'm doing this, I'm, there's a couple things that, 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 that I, you know, I've learned over the years just practicing. I, I'll sit, I'll sit and watch a football game and I've got a couple locks uh, up there up where I watch football and, and I'll sit there and I'll have, uh, you know, I'll have my, my lock picking kits and and I'll just sit there and work with them and 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 and, and uh, try to feel the pins and the and the, and the and the different pins as they as they as they engage and, and know what kind of tension I need to put on the on on, on, on my tension key here. Um, and you're probably thinking, is he ever going to get this? And and again, depending on the lock, uh, some some take longer, uh, some are a lot easier. This master lock here, this is one of your your, your more ba again. Uh, one of the one of the locks that most people have, but as you can see, it didn't take me that long, and that lock was picked. Okay, so would that take me a minute? Um, it's kind of nice technology to have. I'd encourage you to to you know maybe find an easy picking. Um, I carry this one in my bug out. Uh, I showed that to you, um, but it's it's basically it's basically just a very simple um, lock picking kit um, that has it has a couple different tools in it, um, and and this was this is a very common uh, 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 tool here, and and again this all goes in one little quick uh, keychain, and you can quickly pick uh, some pretty high end locks. And this master lock is not a very high level, but again this is number three, which is you know yeah it's it's it's, it's again it's a very common. Uh, high uh, high probability of, of encountering that lock if you ever needed to get into something that that um, you, you really wanted to get some supplies or gears or get through a fence. Um, not bad to, to, to have some of that technology. I do think the extreme day. I do think they were living. We're living, we're living, we're living an extreme day. day.